Southern Africa, home of many wild animals. Whether small or big, the young animals are especially in need of human help. And when the young ones are strong enough, the animal rescuers help them to settle back into the wild. In this episode of Raising Wildlife, elephants need their moms for their first three years. So how do orphaned calves survive in the wild? Chimpanzees in Cameroon are at risk. Can these baby chimps survive the trauma of losing their mothers? Born just two weeks ago, this wildebeest calf has an ear problem. Our first stop is in Zambia. The Lilayi Elephant Nursery is situated in a reserve not far from Lusaka. It was set up to look after abandoned elephant calves for the first three years of their lives. A team of keepers are dedicated to this task 24-7. Currently, there are three young elephants in their care. Hi, I'm, I'm Oliver Munyama, and we are here at the, the Lai Elephant Nursery, where we take care of the orphan baby elephants. So what we are going, what we are doing now, we are handing over to the night shift. We have two shifts: the the night one and the, the day shift. The three baby elephants can never be left alone. Therefore, it takes a group of caretakers to ensure their safety throughout the day and night. So it's very important to take care of these baby elephants because if we are not going to protect them now, we will have no elephants in Zambia. Elephants are on the endangered list in Zambia, and so every effort must be made to prevent an extinction, even if it means these caretakers put their own lives at risk. Were there any incidents with cycling, one Zambia, anything in the bush today? No, sir. not come across it, you know. Didn't come across anyone. Mm. Right. Communication between the two teams is critical. Every detail about the activities in the park need to be communicated so everyone is in the know. It, it's mind-blowing considering that we are losing 35 to 40,000 elephants per year. We're looking at extinction in the wild at this rate with 360,000 elephants left in the wild. Ten years. There is a high global demand for ivory. This puts both elephant and caretaker at risk every single day. And us being human beings, we have to make sure that we take care of the small ones that will have many in the near future. The caretakers play a pivotal role in the longevity of these young elephants. They are their human mothers and fathers because their real parents were killed. They are the last line of defense. An elephant mother will have another baby in the next five years. So a mother will feed for three years. It's not like other animals where by in two years, in, in one year they'll have another baby. Every orphaned elephant will receive this special care until they are three years old. For me, Africa is not Africa without elephants. You think about just the, the big five, Africa, home of the big four, doesn't work for me. And we're gonna all work together to make sure that that does not happen. It takes a special kind of commitment to protect baby elephants. And now it's our responsibility to make sure that uh, we take care of these baby elephants. Okay, these guys are getting a bit feisty, so let's uh, call the evening. We'll be, we'll be close by. Okay. But if you need anything, call me. All right. All right, thanks yeah. guys. Have a good evening. <laughs> Oliver is concerned. Why are the baby elephants not eating as normal? The Mafui Primate Park is situated near Yaounda in Cameroon in West Africa. The park is located in lush tropical forests, which are the natural home of chimpanzees. This species is on the endangered list.
These four babies in Mafui's care are heading out with their caregivers to enjoy some playtime in their natural environment, the forest. Working with the chimps is a very big responsibility. And as a matter of fact, growing up like an orphan and taking care of orphans gives me pleasure and anxiety to keep them close to me because they're like brothers and sisters. It's fun and games, but these baby chimps are dependent on motherly care for up to seven years. The babies are hooting as they're excited about their next meal. During the first few years, regular milk feeds are an important part of each day. Each baby must get the correct bottle, which has been specially prepared for their nutritional needs. Apart from their milk, they also enjoy some fruit, so it won't be long before these little ones start to become more independent. The milk is a very important uh, part of their life. Like if they are in the wild with their mothers, they will be breastfeeding from time to time up to about uh, five years. Those last few drops can be in demand. And so as a matter of fact, since they are in captivity now, we give them this milk, which is a very important part of their life, which enables them to, to grow more healthier and stronger. Each of these orphans has a story to tell and arrived at the center in a stressed, traumatized state. The caregivers have had to work hard to restore their trust and will to live. But life is different now, and they also have each other. It would seem this baby chimp is not wanting to feed. Could there be something wrong? Perhaps he just wants to play. Yeah, our day-to-day -day life with them is uh, very, very tiring and, uh, of course, interesting because if you devoted to work with them, you have to be patient. Now it's time to explore. The forest is their playground and their classroom. We come here every day for the babies to adapt to the environment. To teach them how to climb and understand how to live in their natural environment. And so they're always at ease. They learn through trial and error. Curiosity is abundant. Climbing strength and coordination are not a given. Some nice first tries in the forest, sometimes funny, but sometimes precarious. Let's get back to the Lilai Elephant Nursery in Zambia. The three little elephants and their caretakers are ready for their daily walk. This is part of their exercise routine to maintain their health. We take elephant for the walk because the elephant normally maintains its weight by eating. So an, an elephant is one of the animals which eats a lot. So we, we normally cover 1.5 kilometer. Uh, that is like per, per walk. The keepers need to stand in for the herd who keep a lookout for the younger ones. It's really important, being herbivores, that they eat their natural food. So basically we feed them in the bush because we want them to, to behave well. We don't want to be feeding them at the bomb always. We make sure that we feed them in the bush. Without the example of other elephants, the keepers ensure that they find the right nutrition. They are good animals if you show them love and you care for them. So the guys, all of the guys we have here, they, they are trained highly to make sure that they, they take care of this baby elephant very well. 
The trio is happy to be out and about and browse different plants and the bark of trees. I started caring for this elephant uh, eight years ago, and now I'm, I'm planning to know how to treat them in the, next, in, the next, in the near future. Caring for elephants goes beyond feeding, but ensuring their health is maintained throughout development. We feed them two liters of milk. In the wild, they won't survive without milk. Back to the baby chimpanzees in West Africa. Orphans land up at Mafui Primate Park mostly because their parents are shot for bushmeat or they're confiscated from people trying to sell them as pets. At the moment, there are no safe wild places left in Cameroon for chimpanzees to live, but Mafui hopes that this will one day change. The reason why they are here is because um, normally there is a lot of poaching an orphan like this that the parents must have been killed by those poachers. These chimps have made good progress, but when orphans arrive, they're completely withdrawn and usually refuse all human contact. It's only through the persistent care of their surrogate mothers that they manage to recover. They are being brought into the sanctuary here for us to take care because they know there is a sanctuary here caring for baby wives like the chimps. Endless patience and dedication is needed, but witnessing these young chimps grow in confidence and curiosity brings rich reward. It is very, very challenging working with them, but once you are devoted, hard work is always very easy the way you plan it. Passion and commitment is everything when raising wildlife. Yeah, uh, grooming is very important for the babies because it helps prepare them to build relationship with uh, the adults and uh, most especially when they are in their group. So it helps build relationship with the adults. Mothers groom their babies to calm them down. Grooming also keeps an animal's skin and hair in good condition. <laughs> Looks like this one enjoys a good tickle. Each chimpanzee develops a unique pant hoot. It's used to recognize the individual, much like humans have different voices. The infants welcome another human friend, Lawrence Taylor. They recognize him immediately. Little do they know that Lawrence will be their next caretaker when they become juvenile chimps. Everyone has a place at Mafui, even this chimp who suffered some serious setbacks. He got meningitis as a baby. Sammy. Sammy Samburo. He also is epileptic because of it, so he has uh, seizures as well. Despite his disabilities, he's a leader in his juvenile troop. Let's head south to the Quachas Flukta Wildlife Center in South Africa. It's only recently started up on this farm and fulfills the heartfelt dream of its young founders to care for wild animals in need. At the moment, they're looking after a menagerie of young antelope that were brought in from neighboring farms. Amy Mills and her boyfriend, Andre Liebenberg, care for their baby animal family. This is Quagas the Wildlife Center. Here we raise and rehabilitate young animals. Meet a baby wildebeest or gnu. They're being cared for as most of them have lost their mothers. We start by hand rearing them. These calves need humans to help them and an unusual surrogate parent. I got one of the hand reared lambs. They make the best friends for them. 
So we brought him in to be friends with the Sable and as you can see, he's just adapted to wildlife and being around us and being around the little ones. He's there to keep the animals company. Now obviously our first case is gone and he's just gone on to be friends with the wildebeest now. It is only in these situations that a different species, like the sheep, helps another species. He runs around with them, he plays with them and he actually shows them where to sleep. He walks them and he calls them. If he wants to move, they follow him. So he's kind of the leader of the pack. In the wild, wildebeest calves drink from their mothers for four to six months. It's time for Amy and her boyfriend to prepare their milk bottles. Okay, so each specific animal gets a specific amount of milk depending on their weight. We normally give them a 10% of their body weight. So on 10 kilograms, they get a liter of milk during the whole day. We, kind, we weigh them as soon as they come in. And then of course, as they grow, you just adapt and add the milk. Amy uses cow's milk and enriches this with a probiotic to help their digestive system. This makes it more like what they would drink from their mothers in the wild. The babies also eat grass within two weeks after birth. They use calf teats because of the shape of their mouths and long tongues. This helps them to latch onto the teat easily. They're good to go. Wildlife, babies, anything, kind of a thing I've been doing since I was very young. Obviously when I grew up, I moved to the bush felt and I just went over from small animals to big animals. And these are some of our babies. Not a moment too soon. The calves are eager for their fair share. Feeding four calves simultaneously is a task on its own. Each youngster wants their milk first. At the moment, we have three Ganus with us here. We've got two splits and a golden one. The golden one and the female split comes from the same farm as where the other male comes from a farm just across the valley. The calves are in good condition, but flies can be a real menace for antelope, sometimes burrowing into and damaging an animal's ears. Clara, which is the female, she's a heifer. She's about four weeks old now. You'll see on her ears, she has hematomas that are formed. It's basically blood clots under the ears from, from continuously shaking her ears to get rid of flies or something that's bothering her. What happens is the vein bursts and it just forms like a blister. Eventually it hardens and it forms like a callus around the ear, which you call a cauliflower ear normally. So for the rest of her life, her ears will be a bit crooked, but she will function quite normally in wildlife. After a feed, it's time to caper with their friends and hang out with the herd. This is something that comes naturally to all young animals. Being together as a young herd is important for their own development, as it builds relationships within the herd. When the evening comes, you'll see in the camps a bit later, we have red lights in the camps. This is just for it to keep them warm. The Quachas Flukta Wildlife Center has facilities to ensure the optimal care of the animals. So they all sleep under the red light, keep themselves warm. It's just a little comfy, cozy spot for them. A large number of wildebeest calves do not survive in the wild, but the hard work done at Quachas Flukta ensures that these animals will be able to integrate with a herd sometime soon. Back at the Lelai Elephant Nursery in Zambia, three calves have been out and about with their keepers. Three hours have passed, so it's bottle time. This is good news. Elephant calves are fed human baby formula with some oats, coconut, and supplementary vitamins and minerals. Yeah, we normally feed these baby elephants after three hours. We feed them two liters of milk. Uh, for it's very important for them. In the, in the wild, they won't survive without milk. Infant elephants can be very difficult feeders. In the beginning, the keepers need a lot of patience to get them to drink from these bottles. We take care of, like for me, for all the guys which are here, we take care of each and every elephant. We don't take care like one, because if I'm sick, and Janji is going to suffer. So it's the reason why we rotate, and the old guys, we take care of all of them. In the wild, they live in a tight family group of related females. Mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters and daughters. When a calf is born, 
It is raised and protected by the whole matriarchal herd. Uh, actually, uh, for me, they count me to be the mother for them and the father for them. Me, I control them. I'm playing a very important role like, as a mother for them. So it's a reason why if I, I say stop, they'll stop beating each other. So for them, like themselves, they normally, like Sinjanji, will be trying to be a leader and pushing the young ones to make sure that they know that he's an uh, upcoming leader. And Janji wants to be head of a herd one day. But what does his slightly smaller brother, Kakaro, have to say about this? Back to Cameroon and the Mufui Primate Park, which gives sanctuary to more than 300 primates. The animals are located in different camps in this forest. Larry Taylor is our guide. In the wild, chimpanzees live in troops, so when infants mature, they need to be integrated within a group. The politics within these groups can be complex. So right now we're heading down to what we call Mbeme section. There's uh, two adult chimp groups there. Here we will meet two juvenile troops, each with their own alpha male. So the group size depends a little bit on the enclosure size more. Um, most of our groups here are between 19 to 23 being the largest. It, even if you have a very large enclosure, normally after that size, you start running into problems with size for sleeping chambers and uh, having more fights. Lawrence Taylor needs to keep a watchful eye on the social dynamics within these juvenile troops to ensure the well-being of these animals in captivity. His initial interaction with them involves sharing his sugar cane. <coughs> generally called the, the pre-nursery group. So it's the group that comes in, it's the first stop after they've been having 24-hour care by, by their caregivers. They come here to, to meet other uh, chimps their age, and then eventually go to nursery and then on to the adult groups. Lawrence knows his sugarcane treats work wonders within the group, while he checks how they're doing. So normally the groups are named by uh, necessarily the dominant male, but with a group this young, you're not gonna have a lot of dominant males. The young group is a great home for a chimp called Temburu. He would be vulnerable in a group with older, stronger males. Temburu is the only one who was uh, actually a birth on site, um, but he got meningitis as a baby. Um, it's the reason you see he has a lot of um, uh, deformities in his bone growth uh, and some really bad posture. He also is epileptic because of it, so he has uh, seizures as well. So in spite of his challenges, Temburu has a special place in this primate community. So it's easier to keep a, a good eye on him here in nursery, and he's not in danger of being uh, attacked by um, the adults in the other groups, so he lives with the babies. Which is good, they like him, he's a good kind of big brother to them, he protects them, um, and they, they stick up with him as well. If you work here, you soon learn that each chimpanzee has a unique, distinctive character, and sometimes they get up to monkey business. Hey, Baba. Rest avec moi. Ça va, laisse le terre. Laisse, enlève. <laughs> Ronnie here, um, often referred as a very cheeky chimp. Uh, he is very small, but he's actually quite older than he looks. He always gives newcomers a hard time, so much so he would throw things at volunteers. <laughs> So often when we get new people in this area or new volunteers, he gives them a good week of hazing before he accepts them into the family here in pre-nursery. It's easy to see how people working here develop strong bonds with the apes, making this work very rewarding. But it's also very hard to ever leave. At the Lelai Elephant Nursery, some other sibling dynamics play out. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get up but some help is at hand. Female elephants, such as Kasiwe, like to nurture younger elephants. But the young males are competitive and always eager to become the leader. One day, these dynamics will play out in a herd. Yeah, the plan for us is to, when this elephant, they, at the age of three years, when we stop giving them milk, or we'll move them to another facility, and that is Camp Phoenix in Cafe National Park. That is the plan. 
One day these calves will find a new home in the Kafui National Park in Zambia. And they will join the other head. Our aim is to make sure that one day they will live happily in the bush and they will join the other heads in the bush. Oliver would like to become a wildlife vet. Well, when I started caring for the, for the elephants, I had the passion of be, be becoming some, somebody who won't only take care of elephants, but also treating them. We had a lot of, uh, of challenges of elephant health, and I thought of uh, putting my whole passion in saving wildlife in Zambia, especially elephants. After many hours of foraging, it's time to go back to the boma. A treat lies in store. A refreshing drink and a wallow is the best way to end a long day.